Jordan Con Con Sakin. Awesome programming going on. Uh, some of the old favorites for sure. We do the typical kind of uh, writer's track, costuming, sword play. Uh, obviously, there's going to be gaming and the best panel of the entire convention tonight, Lumi Theories. Be there. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and also, there's this kind of apparently they, they call it a coffle clutch, which I thought. But initially, cafe clutch. See, there's some cafe clutch. Cafe clutch. Cafe clutch. Cafe coffee. Whatever. Whatever it was it sounded kinky to me at first, but it, it's not. To be honest, it's not at all. It's just uh, apparently some strange German words strung together that comes out to be informal sit down discussion, gossipy. You know, sounds great. But I believe there should be a rule for anyone going. Ted, is Ted in here? Um, there should no, not be any raffos, draffos, or maffos allowed. So, uh, <laughs> so ask away is what I'm saying. Hey, Matt. Matt, you're, you're not supposed to be running those big ceremonies this year. <laughs> don't, don't worry, I got it all under control. We're good, Jim. So. No, no, Matt, it's not your turn. I, so I, I think you're a little bit confused. That's cool. Uh, anyways, I, I looked up on your website all year long. There was some guy listed up there. Whatever. He and I... Uh, well, we spoke. Theoryland figured this out. We had a little, let's say, informal Theoryland cafe clash. Is <laughs> um, we came to an understanding, let's just say. So we're good. An understanding? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I had some Theorylanders meet him out in the hallway. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he was amenable to our suggestions. Um, you didn't hurt him, did you? No, no, I'm pretty sure we got the right guy. Um, <laughs> hey, Pops, uh, what was the name of the guy that uh, uh, I had you guys shake down and tie in a closet? Yeah. Richard, uh, Richard, Richard, something. Richard, right? Richard was the guy. I, I mean, uh, Richard, what was his last name? Uh, five, uh, Cypher. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Richard Cypher is pretty much... Um, yeah, we got him, and uh, did you get him that priest he wanted something about confession? I don't know, he's a lover for a priest, you know, you know where we are, where do we Yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. He seemed a little bit excitable, I'll be honest, Jen. Uh, I mean, we put this collar on him like we did with Jason. <laughs> Freaked out. Um, <laughs> and I'll be honest, Richard Cypher is a bit, uh, silly name there, Jen. Uh, Jordan Con. I don't know what you were thinking, so... I'm good. Opening ceremonies, it's exciting. We got Cypher in the closet, we're cool. Um, last year I originally planned to do this thing about, uh, well I think you'll all enjoy it. I, I originally wanted to do something uh, theory landish and no big signs, no anything. We're just going to do some serious good old detective work. Uh, so you're all going to be my willing participants. Excuse me, Tam. I have a quick note for all the people in the room, and then you co can go back to whatever you're doing. Yeah, go um, ahead. To all people here, you should note that um, th this hour will be filled with spoilers of Towers of Midnight. So if you haven't read it and don't want to be spoiled, consider yourself warned. Um, which means leave. <laughs> anyway, trust me, Tam, or Matt, as you call him, doesn't have much heart or spoiler warning. <laughs> Did any of you understand that? <laughs> like I said, I don't really care about spoilers. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Thank you, I appreciate that. That was awesome. So, uh, where were we? Okay. Like I was saying, detective work. If you know Theory Land at all, we pretty much have called every significant theory out there. Moraine had that one covered, she came back. We had Moraine not coming back covered, too. Uh, <laughs> we had Moraine half Lanfear coming back. We, we pretty much had them all covered. Um, we had Grendel coming back covered, and Grendel not coming back covered. We, we even had a, you know Tarna covered back in the Great Hunt. I mean... Pretty much before theory land existed because we're uh, that damn good. So, <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, the next 60 minutes are going to be a fun experiment in what I like to think about as figuring out the mother of all theories together. This is going to be awesome. Um, you and I together will 
Geraldo Rivera style, opening the vault kind of feel. We're going to figure this out. Um, maybe you've guessed it. <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so I see you there. I see you there, John. Uh, so, anyways. I don't know if you know how many countless hours they're going to spend on this theory, but we are at the forefront of all Asmodian-related research and development on, uh, on these theories. And I see you, Daniel. Um, so, <laughs> Team Jordan has told us, if you recall, we weren't going to find this stuff out until the last three books. And we've had two. So it's obvious a memory of light will be where this secret is revealed. <laughs> and I got my hands on some notes that Robert Jordan, he, yeah, I see it, Jen. Um, and uh, <laughs> Jason, Dude, I know you don't like this theory, man. But it's but what? What's up? They told us already, buddy. <laughs> That's us. Uh, I just think it's funny that you think that I wouldn't know about this. I mean, your mind would be boggled by the quantity of information I know about Asmodian. But, man, they, they told us. Okay. Well, I know you're talking about the whole Shadar Haran line where he's like, oh, you're responsible for the death of three chosen and stuff. Look, it's obvious to the casual observer that what was being spoken about was obviously that Ravine was, you know, casually because Grendel didn't show up. There's one. Masana, obviously, you know, we're talking Dream Spike, there's two. And uh, Arangar, number three. So, I know you guys were thinking that. We're good. Um, actually, Matt, uh, it, was, it was in the glossary. Uh, it clearly stated as Williams Killer. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Uh, <laughs> the glossary. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, imagine, it's like JFK's killer ending up in a healthcare bill. I mean, uh, <laughs> no one reads this crap. It's a glossary. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't do something like this. Where's Brandon, right? We're good, right? Uh, well. <laughs> um, well, by the way, is the new raffle. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to fall class to this whole, like, Brandon said it evidence thing. I mean, uh, now let's get back. I don't know if you know that there's this awesome quote that we pulled out recently, not recently, I guess recently in the Asmodian kind of time frame. Hold on, is when and where Asmodian was killed is important to the... Hold on one second, excuse me. Grendel, one of the Forsaken, blah, blah, blah. Ruthless yeah. killer, responsible. Yeah, uh... <laughs> you, you guys made this for Jordan Con, didn't you? <laughs> I have not fallen for this stuff twice, man. Fool me once, Brandon. That was good. Uh, that's hilarious. Oh, you made two books. <laughs> 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 Scripts. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, anyway, welcome to Jordan Con 3, and can we have another sympathetic round of applause for Matt Hatch? Switching to this one. <sighs> oh. 
I hope this standalone learning word is short. So it's really amazing what has happened these past few years. As much as the series had, a, as much as in the series, where a storm had gathered over the blight, I think a storm had gathered in all of our hearts when Robert Jordan passed on. And much again is in the books. I think we've all found a ray of light with Brandon Sanderson and the work he has done. We're coming to an end. It is in sight. And what's even more amazing is Jordan Con, and this place where you can just meet new people, find new things. It is. It changes lives. In fact, allow me an aside for some advent. <laughs> Back in July, when Jen asked me to be the Toastmaster, I was completely beside myself. I mean, I actually got up and did a happy dance. <laughs> actually, we'll make sure you there. That isn't exactly what happened. Uh, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> and the notes clearly state otherwise. You did not get up and dance. Of course I did. <laughs> Richard, don't make us prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Robert Jordan's assistants, Maria Simmons, Mistress of the Notes, and Alan Romanchuk, Master of the Timeline. Alan, what do you mean? Rolling. ceremony. We know how Robert Jordan loved patterns. And what I noticed is that at JordanCon 1, Jason Denzel made us a skit giving us all the published books in an hour. You know, the past. And then last year, Matt gave us a skit that was about the here and now, what was recently revealed and the new theories. So, to complete the pattern, I am going to take us where no Wheel of Time fan has gone. Yet. I will take us to the future. <laughs> Unless, of course, some spoil sports are going to uh, ruin it for me. <laughs> Rafo. 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 Tomato, tomato. <laughs> call it what you will, let's call it all off. <laughs> well then. It is my great honor, then, to get on with the show. <laughs> but that's us to get on with it. Some announcements first. Uh, last minute changes to the program. Uh, you should probably be aware of. David Coe's signing has been moved to 2.30 p.m. on Saturday. We are adding a special screening of The Wit of the Staircase, Hunter Wentworth's documentary on Robert Jordan. This is not the final version of it, and it is not to be considered the first official screening, so that it can maintain eligibility for certain film festivals. This will be Friday night in the workshop after the dinner break. And due to another event overlapping with ours, everything that's in the Camilla room, which was right there, 
is now going to be in the Maplewood, which is right there. That's the dealer's hall, the signings, and all of that. And it's a larger conference room. It's great. We upgraded. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call your attention to the beautiful artwork we have up here. This is done by Seamus Gallagher. If you haven't seen this before, <coughs> check out his blog. It's amazing. He did everything except the um, actual badge art and a couple other obvious things later on. So, let's start with something easy. The Field of Marilord, the great powwow before Tarming Guy. For our purposes, Jason Denzel of DragonMap.com will play Rand. Our wonderful convention chair, Jennifer Liang, shall play the role of Edwin. And if you need mics, grab mics as you need them. Maria, wear that mic so we can play hot potato. Um, uh, Aubrey Pham, our senior director of programming, shall play Elaine. And Sarah Bernard shall reprise her role from the Towers of Midnight as Moiraine. <laughs> Field of Marilor. Do I really have to be a Wayne again? <laughs> um, I think of it. It's like I'm but always I'm always right. Isn't it kind of obvious <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's typecasting, kind of Richard. <laughs> Jason, let's switch. <laughs> All right. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can play a short one. <laughs> Don't forget to cross your arms. Powwow, right? 
But why would you talk to each other? <laughs> well, Rand, as you know, while Maureen was away in the Tower of Genji in Finland, she learned about the thing called a forum. <laughs> yeah, so to people get down and hash out their ideas and have conversations in large groups and try not to be all angry and catty with, with each other. There was even one thing called Jordan Con. Back in the first age, the old records say it was a marvelous thing where people were able to ask questions and find answers. It was a time when anyone could ask questions of people of any nationality, of any rank in society, and they could feel free to do so without any fear of repercussions for that wonderful time. Yeah, of they, they talked about uh, all sorts of things, just from Matt's raid on the Tower of Ginjai, Tavi and his visions, and everything in between. They even talked about other books, like The Way of Kings. <laughs> and Miss Foreign, and they had nifty and amazingly fun trivia contests. I don't think she could... what, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> just read the lines. This is, this is a Wheel of Time book. No one talks to each other in Wheel of Time books. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, but that just really gave us a headache. So, yeah, I mean, you remember that whole Aaron Bayil plot arc, right? Yeah. And look, this is all just because they couldn't sit down and have an adult conversation about their feelings, like me. <laughs> you wanted to play a queen. <laughs> Read the lines. <laughs> Like me in that, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is going on YouTube, isn't it? <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> like me in that complete hunk of man flesh. <laughs> 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 you gotta get my shift and twist. <laughs> <laughs> now, so if we cannot all talk right now, with the shotgun that leaves the I.O. open to mess up the entire fourth age. <laughs> but I like being broody and mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> you can go, just go do it somewhere else. Because this entire thing could have been done in three books if people would have just sat down and talked to each other. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Rand, I'm pregnant and you're the baby daddy. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go now. <laughs> I'm gonna go save the world. <laughs> Whatever you say, just try not to mess up the world too much. It's all here. <laughs> continues to stay catty in the books, while you're here at JordanCon, take part in the conversations. We're all on the same page here. You're going to find conversations about all sorts of loony, crazy theories in the books, in the halls, at the bar, but most of all, in the forum. So check it out, okay? Now, for our next scene... Ah, oh, not logic. Not more of this. Uh, who said that? I did, you flaming gold kitchen shot of a ferret. Now get me out from here. Okay. You? And you're doing a poor job of it all. What exactly do you think you're doing? I'm trying to show the audience how books should end. And you're doing a poor job of it, old boy. Now are you going to introduce me, or do I have to bail fire you until last week? <laughs> um, right. Audience, this is Oliver Kainstaff. Uh, some of you might recognize him from last year's silent auction as the prize piece from Robert Jordan's collection. 
uh, although I didn't know he could talk, much less in a bad Sean Connery accent. <laughs> I only talk this way because you can't even come close to imitating Robert Jordan's amazing baritone. <laughs> Finish so little spleel about a party tomorrow night. Then you and I need to talk. Uh, my, right, right, um, okay, uh, so tomorrow night, as you'll see in your programs, we have a semi-formal Dark Friends ice cream social. Uh, there will be music provided by Paul, I'm going to butcher this name, Bialjak of Ardani Studios, and a silent auction where you can bid on amazing items from trinkets that were in Robert Jordan's office, artwork, original manuscript <coughs> pages, or wonderful things like Oliver here, although Oliver himself is not back up for auction. No, he sits above my computer most days and is rather happy to stay there. Keep telling yourself that, boy -o. Now, you and I need to have a little talk about how you think this whole thing is going to end. And, um, what exactly do you mean by that? You have it all wrong. You seem to be forgetting something rather big. Namely? <laughs> the invasion! The fights! Jordan was a military man! And if it was one thing all this was leading up to, it was not some sit-down-and-talk, feel-good blather. It was blood and guts, boyo! <laughs> dreams are made of. And I guess you're going to let us see some of that, aren't you? You could bet your last gold crown I am. Now strap on your sparkle patch, because we are in for a world of trouble. <laughs> your assistance, please. And, um, what do you need me to do? Well, I'd ask you to stand there and look pretty, but we know you can't do either. <laughs> so I can get a good look at what's going on. All right. The setting is game one, and it is a dark hour indeed. Troll locks have invaded. Chip, you'll be tell Manek. Find yourself some recruits. You must repel the vile beasts. Do I have any volunteers? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come forward, come forward. Emergency, emergency. Come on, who next? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Guys, we just got these special power rock blades for parents blacksmiths, okay? Whoa. I know they seem a little bit flimsy, but I have it on good authority that they can do some amazing things, okay? So, come here, gather in, we gotta make a plan here, because this, this is gonna be this. Yes, and um, perhaps a nice nice shawl. 
Ooh, I've heard there's belly dancing lessons too. <laughs> like belly dancers. Lord once heard about the Paganza. Ooh. Great. Yeah. Okay. And um, there's also going to be a costume contest tomorrow. And um, it's going to be just before the ice cream social. Lord will be sure to attend. <laughs> family-friendly. <laughs> then you must have just not read the memo. You might have just not seen it. Maybe time for some new galoshes, boyo. You know, I think the only thing it's time for is a new cane staff. I wonder if I can get Maria to let me trade you out. <laughs> oh now, Fife. Let's not be so hasty with going back to the same old places. Perhaps uh, I could help you. Uh, what? Aren't you one of the guys from the dealer's hall? Yes, but for right now you can call me I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure all the speculation about what's going to happen, you're all dying to know where I fit in. Um, let's see, um... It says right here you trip on a tree root and break your neck and no one else even notices. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that supposed to be a good way to kill someone off? Hush, I'm finding a wood chipper. Perhaps we can make a deal, Mr. Fife. You give me Althor, and I can sell you something nice. Perhaps a new dagger, or signed copies of old Wheel of Time books, or officially licensed Wheel of Time t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we have wondrous things in this dealer's hall. Yeah, except you're going to sell those to me regardless. That's the entire reason you're here. Which makes it an exceptionally, exceptionally generous offer on your part. <laughs> okay, I'll see what I can do, but um, could you go be that creepy pseudo golem somewhere else? I'm starting to feel like I need to take a bath. Where's my dad? Why don't you took one? <laughs> Again? It's my help if you ever took one. Yeah, that's it. You're going back under the table. No, wait, not the table. I promise I'll be good. Just don't put me under the table. Good. Not a peep, right? Not a peep. <sighs> okay. For our next consideration, let's consider everyone's favorite <coughs> rascal, Matt Calvin. Woohoo! <laughs> Last we saw Matt, he was sitting around a fire with Tom and Moraine. And he was been through some epic battles, the Tower of Genji, even a couple bad romances. A lot more could he have to go through? So let's find out. For the role of Matt, we have Bao Pham, Director of Guest Services. For the narrator, I am pleased to introduce the true mistress of all that is Wheel of Time on Tor.com, Lee Butler. Yes, I regularly stand in her shadow. <laughs> and for the mysterious and ominous stranger that Matt will meet on the road to Tarvin Guiden, it is my great honor to introduce the man who is scratching our Wheel of Time itch, author and all-around good guy, Brandon Sanderson. Gentlemen and 
mademoiselle, if you will. The dark one went down to Andor. He was looking for a soul to play. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a bind. The book was way behind. But he was looking to play a game. But he came across this one-eyed boy shaking some dice and throwing them hard. The dark one jumped up on a leather leaf stump and said, <laughs> I didn't bet you didn't know, but I can play a good card, too. How about, and if you get care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you. Now, you toss some pretty good dice, boy, but give the dark one his due. I'll bet some dice of gold against your soul, because I think I'm better than you. The boy said, My name's Matro, and it might be a crime, but I'll take your bet. You're gonna regret it, because I'm the hero of the real time. <laughs> After you gather up your dice, you throw them right, because Jack of the Shadows is your foe, right up, down up, down up from the blight. And if you win, you get these here shiny dice made out of gold. But if you lose, the dark one gets your soul. The dark one opened up his box and said, this will be tragic. And the fire <laughs> flew, from, flew from his fingertips as he shuffled in death and magic. <laughs> <laughs> he drew his hand and issued out a chuckle right on a manic. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> then a band of fanboys circled round and they sounded up a panic. <laughs> Stones and Matt's Dice, a Wheel of Time RPG, wouldn't it be nice? If you didn't catch it, that's all the different types of games we're going to have in the gaming panels. So, really check them out. Now, I have, of course, left the biggest and best for last. I am, of course, talking about... I said, I'm, a, I'm on computer. There we are. Rant and the central struggle of Tarman Gaiden. Some of us have been waiting over 20 years to see this. And now, for the role of Rand, we have none other than yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> you might consider playing Baron instead, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wolhead, thing John Rather well, and the beard to boot. <laughs> Wood chipper! <laughs> <clears throat> the hour is dark, but Rand marches into the blight without a word. Having discovered a way to fly, using the one power, he soars over Tarwin's Gap, <laughs> where all the Valkyrian shadow spawn are fighting. Both sides pause in wonder at the radiant sight of Rand, and Trollocs are cured of their twisted nature and throw down their weapons. <laughs> On Shale Ghoul, Shatter Halan attempts to stop Rand, but Rand masterfully slices him in half with his pinky finger. <laughs> he stops and looks to the south. Donning the hat Matt had given him out of sheer respect. <laughs> Hold on a minute, what are you doing? Uh, I am, um, I'm, I'm telling him how the book ends. Yeah, about that. Can we give you some pointers, maybe? Uh, it's kind of what we do. Uh, yeah, I, I'd imagine so. Um, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce several of the writers we have this weekend. First, our guest of honor for JordanCon 2011 is award-winning tour author David B. Coe. <clears throat> the 
David has published a dozen novels and co-authored How to Write Magical Worlds, a writer's companion. Returning this year is the charming Jana Oliver. Author of the recently released The Demon Trapper's Daughter and the award-winning Time Rover series. And new this year, but unfortunately not present, is Yuji Foster, whose novelette, Sinner, Baker, Fabulist Priest, Red Mask, Black Mask, Gentleman, Beast, Ethel, uh, won the 2009 Nebula Award, and it was a finalist for the 2010 Hugo. <coughs> if you didn't catch it, these are an award-winning lot. <laughs> Very lucky to have them. So, you have some advice for me. To a Mary Sue. We kind of did. I mean, we have the script too, Richard. And when exactly did Rand grow a beard? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he actually didn't grow it. See, it's right here on page 17. After the giant festival everyone threw in his honor before the battle, Matt gave him the hat and Perrin gave him the beard. <laughs> 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 yeah, you might want to rethink that one. Also, all this, he kills stuff with a wave of his hand, he cuts them in half, and, well, yeah. You might want to listen to that walking stick, talking stick a bit more about really letting some blood and guts in it, or just in general, showing instead of telling. Show? I can show. Really? Okay, that's good. Example? Right, right here, on page 1374. Rand finds the Tucson song and gives it back to them. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding the script. Uh, we uh, can get that part. Okay. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> it is Friday, right? We're all happy, right? I don't know either. Is it scary how the lights things up? Fiction or not, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna kind of uh, have to uh, shelf it and uh, just kind of stick to my uh, normal projects of uh, web serial steampunks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, boy? Oh, oh, where'd that come from? <laughs> Lots of it shameless, isn't it? Yeah, probably. 
I warned Jen that I was going to have to blatantly plug myself somewhere in the ceremony. But hey, I, I plugged you too. Well, I'm all right then. I suppose I can live with that. Good, good. Uh, right then. <coughs> now then, how about the end of this little farce? <sighs> yeah, uh, I think I'm going to have to uh, say the same thing we've heard for the last 20 years. Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> 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 but you can't just end it like that! And that is. We <laughs> can find out! <laughs> so, that's the end of the skit set. Okay, so we still have a couple minutes left. So, um, let me end this debacle with a little bit of seriousness. See, a true anecdote is that when Jen asked me to be the Toastmaster for this convention, I said yes before I really knew what I was getting into. And so, a couple months later, I emailed her and asked for some advice. She replied and told me that the Toastmaster, and in fact the opening ceremonies in general, are a staid event where the guests of honor and the convention in general are introduced. Okay, so I googled the definition of state. Okay, I'm a, I'm a writer, but she's a school teacher. She's allowed to have a better vocabulary than me. <laughs> state, adjective. Sedate, respectable, and unadventurous. So I double checked to make sure it was Jordan Con I'd signed up for. <laughs> and remembering the past opening ceremonies, I completely ignored her. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but in the interest of being a good Toastmaster, allow me to have a staid moment here. What I'd like to talk about is what Robert Jordan means to me. Not as a fan, but as a writer. My honest to light earliest memories are of wanting to write. I remember watching the movie Dragon Slayer and thinking, I can do better than that. <laughs> and stealing my mom's typewriter and plucking out a little chapter book. It didn't get past chapter one, but I tried. <laughs> But despite wanting to write, it took a long time for the actual writing to begin. And I grew up reading Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, Piers Anthony and David Eddings, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. But all of these only ever scratched my itch for fantasy. They never actually motivated me to want to write. Then one day in 1998, a friend of mine hands me the eye of the world. Now my dark deep secret here is that I only got to about four kinks before I put it down because of various other distractions, and it wasn't until about 03 that I picked it back up and figured out what I was missing. But something that I read back in 98 really stuck with me. In particular, the prologue, Dragon Mount. Those words were emblazoned on my mind, and they began to mold me. It was shortly after I read that prologue that I started putting pen to paper with any consistency. I wrote numerous, wonderful and complete knockoffs of Dragon Mount to prolong my own stories. And thankfully, all of those have been lost in hard drive crashes and cross-country moves. But despite my homage, it took me a while to realize that Robert Jordan is who really got the ball rolling for me. And now, like any other writer who has grown up reading Jordan, I have my own epics I want to tell, and I'm doing what I can to perfect my words so I'm ready. But what was it about Jordan? He's not the first person to write a really long series, nor the first to write a high fantasy. Why didn't Lewis or Tolkien inspire me the same way? I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I found a kernel of the answer at JordanCon 1. There, somewhere between meeting Team Jordan and all the amazing fans, I realized a unique truth. Robert Jordan's legacy is not just ink on paper nor is it even a vast and fully realized world and story. It's something more than that. Something that's living and breathing. It plants a seed in your mind and just grows and makes you think. In the wheel of time, there are mirrors for our society and the hard questions we have to ask. Grand may be fighting the ultimate battle between good and evil, but there are a thousand different ways that Jordan has challenged us to think about our own internal struggles. And it's that literary passion that started to grow in me when I read the prologue of Dragon Mount. 
there is a scope and power in those words that lets you know this is not just any other book. Even in his madness, we can see ourselves in who's there. We can feel his loss and his failure. And that's what Robert Jordan means to me. It's not the gorgeous description. It's not the vast world. It's not even the diversity of the characters. It's that he makes me feel what they feel, unlike any other fantasy that came before it. And he did it with careful thought and a desire to ask questions without telling the answers. Even if he had answers for himself, he did not presume to tell us, because I think he knew any answer is larger than just one person. He knew we needed to experience it, and he gave us the means. Because, after all, the cardinal rule of writing is to show, not tell. And it's that idea, that power that Jordan wrote with, that drives those of us who've been inspired by his work. Yes, we all want to tell our epics. But moreover, if we really examine and realize it, we want to ask questions that make people think. We want to tell stories that will make them discuss. We want to build worlds where we can find our answers and then share the worlds so that other people can find their own answers. And so, this weekend, let us ask our questions, let us discuss our thoughts, and let us try as we might to find our answers. We are on the brink, not of seeing the end of a series, but of being posed a final query. When we thought all hope was lost, a storm had gathered and the Towers of Midnight themselves stood before us. But soon, the pattern willing, we will have our conclusion. And so, join me here as we march on to Tarman Gaiden with naught but a memory of light to guide us. That's it, you're free. <laughs>